on January 1st, New Year's Day, 2011, at 4 in the morning. I lay in bed asleep. I've never been a heavy sleeper. For as long as I can remember, I wake up a couple times throughout the night before quickly trying to drift back into sleep, dreading the possibility that my alarm might soon repeat the process for good. I also don't sleep soundly when I feel alone. Another presence is comforting, so long as I invited it. And for many years, I slept with the television on, providing that sense of life in the room, even if entirely fictitious. Stunted as I am, it was always Cartoon Network airing. Or should I say Adult Swim, the nighttime television block. This night, it was like lightning had struck my consciousness. Right on schedule, 4 a.m. My mind still scrambling between alert and languid. I turn my head toward the program across the room and briefly contemplate if it's still just a dream. A psychedelic collection of surreal footage, otherworldly and comic audio and music played before me for the next 11 minutes, and I was dumbstruck. I had never witnessed something so odd on television, an experience only enhanced by my minimal awareness at the time. It was simply bizarre to be there in that moment, watching somebody's personal YouTube playlist essentially melt into a TV spot. Among the chaos of new stimuli, Sirik Harris's Meow Mix was tossed in, the only thing that truly registered in my head back then because I was already a fan of the piece. I felt joy knowing an artist I looked up to on the internet made it on television. After all, this was a big leap for most content creators a decade ago. I was conscious enough to check the TV guide, curious as to what the hell was happening. Nothing. It read, no information available. I again fell to sleep, feeling as though I had just been through an altered state. The following day I searched online for anyone else who had seen it and found surprisingly little. Only a thread or two on obscure forums mentioning the show and nobody knew what it was. I didn't know it at the time, but Adult Swim had just pulled off something fascinating, seeming with little to gain. During one of their slowest hours of the block, unannounced, they had just premiered Off the Air, a compilation segment dedicated to strange music videos and whatever clips the staff felt suitable to augment the dreamlike editing, and deliberately named Devoid of Meaning to mask itself from the uninquiring. Even today, I've heard almost nothing about this show from anyone else. It was as though they wanted to make something that only the most fringe viewers would follow simply for the fun of it. And yet, Dave Hughes series has been continuing to release more editions even as recently as 2020, totaling over 30 episodes, always airing intermittently at the same graveyard slot. Never the network afraid to experiment, I'd consider it a success. But you probably didn't click this video to hear about that, so why am I talking about it? There's something valuable to embracing randomness in art. The word randomness has been conflated with the pre-adolescent drive to appear unique and stand out as an attention-seeking behavior, but honing in on this idea, I feel, can deprive oneself from allowing a true, unironic, and passionate embrace with the benefits of accepting the patternless and the unpredictable. We come to expect a lot of the same on television, and while some wait with open arms for a shakeup, many others meet the change with negativity, a discomfort or disinterest with novelty where they would rather find familiarity. Neither are wrong necessarily, but I adamantly prefer the novel. This is where Yasuke comes in. Yasuke is a six episode series directed by LaShawn Thomas, known previously for working on heavily anime inspired Adult Swim programs such as Black Dynamite, which he also directed, and The Boondocks, where he played a significant role in the first two seasons as co director and supervising character designer, no doubt being instrumental in making those formative episodes as special as they are. Connecting off the air with Thomas's modern work more directly, however, is the score of Yasuke, spearheaded by musician Flying Lotus. Flying Lotus stands out to me in particular as my personal introduction to his work was that faded night viewing off the air where the music video for his track, Zodiac Shit, was featured almost immediately. There's some clear Adult Swim flavor coursing through the production of Yasuke, some of which shows through in the visual direction taken in various scenes such as fights that resemble the choreography of the boondocks, known for suddenly introducing well-crafted brawls itself, only more over the top and violent. But what Off the Air and Yasuke truly share, in my opinion, is not the networking artists among them, but the previously mentioned value of randomness. Off the Air's indulgence in this is obvious, but Yasuke is at least loosely based on a real individual in history, and a story about his life. Yasuke was well known to be a retainer under Oda Nobunaga, and there are even historical accounts of Nobunaga washing the man, finding it difficult to believe that people of such dark complexion even existed, having likely never met another African man. 
but anyone with half a brain stem can probably figure out that the historical accuracy of the show almost certainly ends there when Mecha War is conceptualized during the Sengoku era. For many, this was a turnoff. I think people really did come into Yasuke hoping for a realistic account of an already unheard of tale about the mysterious black samurai that Nobunaga took a fancy to. But diving into a show with a certain expectation about what story it needs to tell is a recipe for disappointment when the entire direction is contrary to a presumption one has built up in their own head. Yasuke as a series does not give a fuck. There's this robot who makes racist comments about Yasuke without realizing it because not even the robots in Fantasy Japan have ever seen more than one other black man. This assassin transforms into a bear, this guy raises these green Air Max spirits from the ground to fight for him, this crooked smiling priest will murder without hesitation to accomplish his goals for Jesus of course. Various people use horrific psychic powers to maim others. You might begin to wonder why anyone in Japan is bothering with traditional swordplay when shit like this is commonplace. To top it off, you'll receive shockingly little explanation as to why these things happen aside from brief comments here and there. The show doesn't give you or itself a lot of time to waste on telling you why every little thing is happening or how it came to be. To enjoy Yasuke, you need to leave demands for sensibility behind. If you were to ask me, anime has a very bad habit of explaining everything to the viewer in overabundance. Yasuke says to us, you have eyes, use them. Who really cares why she's a bear? We only have so much time together. Just appreciate that she is a bear, and Yasuke is going to have to kick her ass. Now, I'm not saying that shows need no explanation when wacky ideas are presented, but Yasuke is making itself clear. Around every turn is a crazy character about to do some impossible thing, and the staff of the show just wanted to have fun with those ideas. If you need every show you watch to make some sense, Yasuke might not be for you, because outside of relatively straightforward adventure narratives, most of the conflict will revolve around the over-the-top fantasy, and accepting those ideas at face value is all the show wants from you. I'd feel different about Yasuke if I were expected to understand why robots exist in this universe, but I'm not. The show isn't interested in making me understand why, it only wants them to be there for the hell of it. To reiterate, this is where embracing randomness is a virtue. Without a willingness to do so, it's understandable why Yasuke would be hard to swallow. But embrace it or look beyond it begrudgingly and you'll find a ride shorter but packed with more ideas and action than just about any series you can think of.